All right, thank you for staying with the Monday Report. C.S. Eliudo Wale is still with us here. He's the Cabinet Secretary for Information, Communication and the Digital Economy. And send in your questions. We'll pose your questions to him at some point at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Monday Report. We'll come back to that in just a bit. But C.S., before we took a break and talked about business matters, we were talking about the Wi-Fi hotspots. You've yes. done 421 and you launched three more, so we're at 424. Yeah. But the target is 25,000. At what point will you achieve that target? We had, we had to envisage that we'll roll out the... 25,000 Wi-Fi hotspots, wi hotspots over the next five years. But based on the plan that we have and the level of partnership that we envisage, we believe we should be able to do that within the next two to three years. We may not go the full hog of five years. So in two years, this should be complete? Two to three years, we should. Because what we are doing now moving forward is to ensure that we come up with a framework of partnership with the private sector, a critical mass of internet service providers. We, you know, we have got under, unutilized capacity within our North B. We want to make that available to the private sector uh, so that they benefit from it. Yeah. And then we see if they can roll out the internet connectivity at much reduced cost because we are providing that for free and then that will lead into a reduction in the uh, in the cost outlay which will be passed on to the consumer by almost by way of almost zero uh, rates okay that's what we are doing so we have actually had meetings with private sector players yeah. internet service providers and we have agreed on a framework through which we are going to roll out this uh, Wi-Fi deployment en masse. Okay. And we are going to do this through competitive bidding again. We'll open it up to all the players. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of internet provision, your predecessor, Joe Musheru, launched yes. the Google Balloons. Yeah. That was meant to cover 4G and provide internet for over 20 million people. Yeah. What is the status update for that? Are you using any of that infrastructure? You see, what happened, and again, this was way back in 2013, information available at my disposal is that this was an initiative between Google, the ministry, and uh, Telecom Kenya. But what happened in the cost of implementation of this program, there are certain issues which were raised with respect to conformity to the set uh, regulatory requirements by the aviation industry, aviation sector regulator, and also some other security concerns were also raised as far as the operationalization of that program was concerned. So the net effect is that that program stalled midstream and the financial support that was actually coming from Gogu was diverted by, uh, to deployment of ICT infrastructure, targeting TVET, targeting the judiciary, and also targeting uh, schools. So this project was abandoned. Was it a waste of taxpayers' money? I will not you know, say it was a waste of taxpayers. First of all, one the balloon was seventeen thousand US dollars. I will not say it was a waste of uh, taxpayers' money. I don't want to impute an improper motive on anybody's part. Uh, because it stalled um, midstream, and then the money which was meant for this project was diverted elsewhere, through internet connectivity to the judiciary, to the TVETs, and the hospitals. So I will not say it was a, a waste of taxpayers' money. But again, um, it is not really for me to, 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 do, to do the evaluation of uh, that project as at now because we are not really moving forward with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asking so you this because you keep pushing the digital agenda. Yeah. Yeah. What is this digital agenda and what is the end game? <laughs> Let me tell you, Kenya is not going to be the same again uh, moving forward if we successfully roll out the plan that we have. You know, uh, in our digital superhighway, which is a standalone thematic area in the Kenya Kwanzaa plan, we want to roll out 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable. So what would happen is that all those parts of the country that, that were not been connected by way of fiber will get connectivity. Two, we are rolling out the 25,000 free Wi-Fi hotspots, targeting the market, targeting bus termini. Yeah? The purpose here is to bring on board those who are at the bottom of the economic pyramid by way of ICT infrastructure inclusivity so that they leverage on this infrastructure for purposes of e-commerce. So that's again the direction that we are going, that moving forward, we want to leverage on ICT for purposes of e-commerce. It does not make sense anymore for the buyer of a commodity to have a physical interface with the seller of a commodity. We want a virtual mechanism through which we can facilitate interaction between the source of raw materials and the market. That's the direction we are going. And we have already come up with a, an e-commerce strategy for purposes of operationalizing this or on the basis of which this can be anchored. 
three, we are establishing a total of 1,500 or 450 digital laboratories. For a start, we have partnered with the TVETs, we are rolling it out in TVETs, we are also deploying some of these uh, devices in schools, but in each and every ward in this country, we are going to establish and operationalize a digital hub where our youth can go and get ICT training for free, sponsored by the government. We are going to deploy the devices, we are also going to provide the training, and we are moving a step further as government to try and get digital jobs for our youth. We have come up with a working framework in partnership with the National Assembly. To the extent that the National Assembly, through the CDF, will be able to meet certain recurring expenditure costs such as electricity. They'll also be able to identify for us the facilities where we are going to do the, the deployment. Okay? So once they give us the infrastructure, we go deploy, we undertake the training, link up the youth to the jobs. Yeah. In each and every digital lab, we have the capacity or capability or probability of creating a total of 300 what? 300 jobs at a minimum. If the youth are being trained in three shifts, which is the standard practice in a day, yeah. we can create a total of 900 jobs in each digital what? Digital hub. Yeah. And mark you, in each constituency, we have on average five wards, which means at a minimum in each constituency, we should be able to create 1,500 what? Digital jobs for our youth. Mm. What will be the net, eff net, net, net effect? The net effect is that we will no longer witness rural urban migration by the youth in search of jobs because the white collar jobs are today limited. Mm -hmm. We will be creating the jobs right there in the village where the youth are. We have also conversely engaged the Council of Governors yeah. to agree on a partnership as far as rolling out of this program is concerned. And the county governments have also accepted to bring, make available at our disposal the hitherto polytechnics, which are underutilized today for this purpose. Mm -hmm. We will utilize those, that, that, that physical infrastructure again to deploy, train, and get the jobs. Yeah. So this really is the critical game changer that we have available at our disposal for purposes of creating jobs. We envisage that within a year or two, we should have created a minimum of one million jobs okay. for our youth. As we speak, yeah. just over the past few months since we came into government, we have already created over 100,000 jobs. We have already trained 336,000 youth under this program. So, so Waziri, where does this leave the ordinary pastoralist or my grandmother, the village, who may not be ICT tech savvy? We've seen such initiatives before. I mean, yeah. when the one that comes to my mind is a laptop affair. Yeah. There was a laptop initiative, never happened. So how, how do you bring on board the people? We are, carrying, we are carrying along everybody, including members of the public. Yeah. So we are not just trading the youth alone. We have come up with a program through which we are going to have massive sensitization of the public as far as this digitalization agenda is concerned. Basic skills. You know, the direction we are going is that once we have this infrastructure in place, we are not going to have any manual processes in government. We are going to run a paperless government. As we speak, we have already digitalized 5,084 services fully, as which I had alluded to earlier. By the end of the year, all government services will be available on the e-citizen platform, and members of the public will no longer have the justification, or government will no longer have the justification of asking members of the public to physically visit government offices to consume those services. We are digitalizing the services. We are pursuing a digital identity to facilitate a means of interaction between the public and government, yeah. a means through which virtually government can confirm that you are actually the person you claim to be, so that you don't have to go to a government office to physically show your ID to get a service. That is the direction we are going. Kenyans will be able to consume government services from the comfort of wherever yeah. they are. The next thing we are doing to enhance efficiency and effectiveness is to introduce digital signatures so that we don't have bureaucratic red tape in government, so that people can sign, government processes can flow seamlessly, yeah? without somebody having to be physically present to sign. Yeah. So these digital signatures will enhance, actually it will re-engineer yeah. the operations of government to facilitate efficiency and effectiveness in service. How will you guard against fraud? That is why we are digitalizing. We are digitalizing while also mitigating against fraud. One other end result we envisage through this process, Trevor, is to eliminate revenue leakages.
Fraud is part of the revenue leakages that we have been witnessing. Through digitalization, we are not going to have really fraud, or if not, we are going to have minimal levels of fraud if it also exists. But our target is to eliminate fraud, eliminate corruption, because we will not have a situation where the public has to interact with the government officers to get service. Okay. Everything will be available technologically. It will be between you, your phone, and the government. Okay. And to facilitate inclusivity, we have been having a challenge of smart enabled phones in the market. So as government, again, consciously, deliberately, and proactively, we have partnered with the private sector to embark on assembly of cheap, smart enabled phones which will be rolled out in the Kenyan market within the next two months at most. In the next two months? Oh yes. It was, you said that it was going to be about 40 USD. Yes, about 40 about US, four, yeah, four, 40 US dollars. About 5,000 K. 5 K. In the next two months? Yes, yes. Will be completely smart. Oh yes, the first set will be rolled out at 40 US dollars per, per, per unit. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about something else here. The last time you were here, was yeah, here, yeah. you said you would then re-engineer the government advertising space. Yeah. How far are you with that? That is work in progress. You know, uh, when I talked about re-engineering uh, the GA, it was not, it's not anything out of the ordinary. Yeah. So uh, what then it means is that the operational environment is not static. Factors in play keep on changing. It's dynamic. And as factors in play in that operational environment change, you need to reorient yourself, to align yourself to that operational environment. How we are operating today needs to change. Based on technology, for example, we are now moving away from the traditional way of doing business to technology. One, for example, we may no longer need to have uh, a critical mass of print with, with the emergence of technology. Perhaps we may think of having uh, MyGov on digital platform. That is one option. I'm just giving you an example for purposes of illustration. Yeah. So I don't really want um, the public and specifically the media to panic about this because as and when we want to introduce any changes, and I've stated this from the very beginning when I came into this ministry, that we will adapt a participatory approach. When it comes to pass, we will hold consultations with the, with the media. We'll call the media and explain to the media what changes we want to put in, in place. But it is not just exclusive to us as government to reorient ourselves. Even for the media itself, I've stated many, time, many a time before that a critical success factor for the media in the world of today is the level of strategic agility and maneuverability. Yeah. You cannot continue operating the way you have been operating. You are going to go out of business. We are moving towards technological perspective, and you must reorient the way you are operating as media also to remain relevant. Okay. And in this regard, I don't want us to hold uh, government responsible for purposes of finding, for funding the private sector. It so happens that through GAA, the media has been benefiting, benefiting by way of funding from government or a revenue stream from government. The role of government is to create an enabling environment for the private sector to thrive. Not to fund the private sector. What does that mean, Waziri? Because there what it means, people are saying just that hold is on, a, just hold a, a on. position to reduce, you are, are, are no, no, to no. reduce or entirely eradicate government advertising. On that mainstream. is not really the issue because we, we should not actually have any ill motives as far as the private sector is concerned, the media inclusive. But in the same vein, the fact that government has been spending money on media advertising, people should not institutionalize it to the extent that it now looks like a cardinal responsibility of government to fund the media, as if it is anchored on the, our constitutional dispensation. That is not the case. What we are saying is that it so happens that government has been uh, spending money on, by way of advertising on, 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 on the media. But the direction now we are moving is the digital space. Why must we continue having print, my gov in print, and circulating it through the media, for example? Does it really make sense? Believe you me, as and when I'm ready, I'll call the media for a discussion. And I'll assure you that based on the fact that I have on the table and the direction that we want to go, I'll convince the media. And you'll see that whatever direction we want to go is informed by logic as opposed to any ulterior motives. Okay. We will not do it in secret. We will call you and explain to you, look, hey, this is where we are. 
This is what is happening in our operational environment. This is where we want to go to get the buy-in of the media as well. We will carry everybody along in this journey. We are not going to do it in isolation. All right. In your last discussion, you also indicated a harmonious working relationship between government and media. Yeah. Practically speaking, what should that look like? Don't misconstrue it to mean that we want to go into bed with media. <laughs> <laughs> do your bit, we do our bit. Let us concentrate on governance. You also <laughs> concentrate on oversight yeah. of government for, uh, in the interest of the public, okay. the way you have been doing. It is not in the interest of government, Kenya Kwanza government, this root of government, to muzzle the media. No, yeah. it's not. What we are saying is that we want a responsible media. We believe and understand the fact that there are mechanisms through which the media can self-regulate itself. And we want to uphold that and respect that. Continue working within an ambit and regulating yourself within the confines of the framework that you have. Yeah? But as government, also let us govern. Continue oversighting government and give us f feedback for free. Yeah. Yeah? Free customer feedback as how to how we are performing as government. All right. And to us, we have nothing to hide. We'll keep on reporting what we are doing as government. We will welcome positive criticism where we need to improve. We will welcome that. Okay. Where we, based on our past performance, we have learned some lessons that need to improve our performance moving forward. We will use that to inform what we are doing moving forward. Okay. So we welcome positive criticism from the media. We welcome feedback from the media. But in the same vein, yeah. Let us have responsible journalism. Okay. Journalism that does not, uh, which is not tantamount to creating an atmosphere that scares the private sector, investors. Yeah? And I've said before, and I want to repeat, with no Ill ulterior motives. We have witnessed, for example, during some of the demonstrations that we have had in the past, yeah? the so-called uh, demonstrations against, uh, um, about cost of living, we have witnessed instances where the media um, is doing live reporting. And the direction that those live reporting <laughs> takes, it's as if the media is actually mobilizing people to come out to demonstrate. How is that? The media just puts their cameras there. No, what no, 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 no. When you go, for example, to the slums and you position your cameras and state, now people are coming out to demonstrate. You are basically whipping up public uh, sentiments for that purpose. This is what we are saying. There is need for some responsibility on behalf of the media. You don't think we should go live? No, no, no. You should go live. But it has to be done within some modicum of honor and responsibility, knowing very well that you are not operating in a vacuum. But don't we what owe we to do, the public the truth as it is? Yeah, yeah. But you should not be seen to be taking sides. Let me put it that way. Do it impartially indiscriminately, impartially, in the interest of all stakeholders, the government inclusive, because it is also the responsibility of government to, ensuring, to ensure that there is an, a prevailing environment okay. yeah, that is conducive to pri private sector investment and foreign capital inflow. All right. Yeah. There are many questions coming from the people, and I'm about to take a quick break here, but there's another pending matter of the government spokesperson. You're yeah. advertised and re-advertised. Why is this position still vacant? You see, there are basic tenets or basic principles which govern recruitment processes. When you want to recruit one, you must have a job description. In the job description, you have got the roles and responsibilities which the person who is going to perform that job is going to undertake, the roles and responsibilities. That is one hand. The other issue is that you have got job specifications. Job specifications entail or articulate the minimum standards by way of qualifications, skills, competencies, and experience that the candidate must conform to. Once you have that job description and the, 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 the person's specifications, then you invite the applications on that basis, yeah. okay? As the applications come, what then you use as a checklist is your job description and person specification. Okay. So you look at the person specifications which you had to see whether the response is conform to those minimum standards. That is what you use as your yardstick. If the responses you get do not conform to the minimum standards, then that, 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 that advert then becomes non-responsive and you have to repeat the process again. So the first time you advertised, you didn't get people who qualify? The Public Service Commission yeah. did not get people who qualify. The Public Service Commission was undertaking that recruitment okay. on our behalf. Okay. Yeah, we and were now, not doing it directly as a ministry. And the re-advertising? 
then the advertisement, they are dealing with it. Okay. Yeah, they are right. dealing with it. And we believe, and I stated the other day, that in another one or week, or two weeks maximum, yeah. that process should be complete and we should have a government spokesman. In any recruitment process, when you go out to recruit, your urge is not to get somebody to come and occupy the position. You are looking for somebody with the skills, competencies, and capabilities to effectively undertake that, that job. Okay. So, in the converse, if you don't get, then you repeat the exercise. That's what happened. Okay. I believe that's what, what the Public Service Commission did right. from the explanation they gave us. Waziri, I have to take a quick break, but there are yeah. many questions coming from the public. When we come back from this break, I'll run through the sporting action, and then all the questions from the public will now be posed. The questions are welcome. Yes, right. Yeah. From at Trevor Mbidia to Citizen TV Kenya, is the hashtag Monday Report. Waziri is still with us. We're taking a quick break. We're back with him in just a bit, and, and some sports news as well. See you shortly.